video, we will be discussing, explaining, and demonstrating the Roos test for thoracic outlet syndrome. The biomechanical explanation of the Roos test, according to Dr. Dan Pinto of NUPT, the Roos test is a diagnostic tool used in the identification of thoracic outlet syndrome, also known as TOS. TOS is defined as upper extremity symptoms due to compression of the neurovascular bundle by various structures in the area just above the first rib and behind the clavicle. According to Goodman et al. in 2005, there are many bones, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels that course through the thoracic outlet region. However, the structures that are most often affected in this disorder include the clavicle, first rib, scalene muscles, more specifically the anterior and middle scalene, pectoralis minor, the subclavian artery and vein, and the upper and lower brachial plexus. According to Talut in 2005, light exercises in 90 degrees abduction and external rotation cause maximal neurogenic compression on the brachial plexus and subclavian vessels. The indications and contraindications for Roos test. According to Brannigan et al. in 2004, indications for thoracic outlet syndrome and therefore, the use of Roos tests include, but are not limited to the following. Gradual increase in pain at the neck and shoulder, progressing down the arm. Paresthesia in the forearm and fingers. Weakness in the upper extremity. And in case of arterial compression, arm paler with elevated reactive hyperemia when limb is lowered. And in case of venous compression, cyanosis and swelling. There are no reported contraindications for performing the Roos test. Psychometrics. According to Gillard et al. in 2000, the following psychometrics for Roos tests were found. Sensitivity, 84%. Specificity, 30%. A positive predictive value of 68%. And a negative predictive value of 50%. Gillard in 2000 found the Roos test had better psychometrics when combined with other provocative tests, such as AdSense test. It is suggested by Nord et al. in 2008 the Roos test may have a high false positive, up to 47% in normal subjects. A step-by-step -step detail of how the Roos test is carried out was given by Dr. Dan Pinto of NUPT in class notes. The patient is to be seated with shoulders abducted to 90 degrees and elbows flexed to 90 degrees. The patient is then asked to retract the scapula. The patient is further instructed to open and close the hands slowly for a total of three minutes. The number of repetitions can be used to monitor progress or compare left to right. The outcomes for the test were also provided by Dr. Dan Pinto of NUPT. Positive findings of Roos test include blanching of the hands and paresthesia into the fingers. In addition, if the patient is unable to complete the task for three minutes, a positive test is indicated. Negative signs of the Roos test include the patient is able to complete the Roos test for the entire three minutes and no blanching of the hands and paresthesia into the fingers. Now we will give an example of a demonstration of the Roos test. Okay, Caitlin, based off of the symptoms you've been telling me, I think you may have thoracic outlet syndrome. Okay, so what that is, is you have what's called a thoracic outlet, which is formed by your collarbone and your first rib. And you have several structures running in that area, such as nerves and arteries and veins. And it's a pretty small area, so with the muscles in there also, those nerves and arteries can become compressed and then create the symptoms down your arm. Okay. So you're telling me you have tingling and numbness mm -hmm. down your arm and those structures can be compressed creating that, okay? Okay. So I want to do a special test. You can have a seat. Okay. To see it's in this area over here, like on top. Yep, exactly. So I want to do a special test called the Roos test to see if it reproduces any of your symptoms, okay? okay. And it'll give me a better idea as to whether or not you have thoracic outlet syndrome. Okay. Okay? So, I'll demonstrate first, and then we'll get you in the proper position. Great. Okay? 
So you're going to bring your arms up to your side like this. You're going to bend your elbows to 90 degrees. You're going to pull your shoulder blades back. Okay? And then you're just going to slowly open and close your hands for three minutes. Okay. Okay? And during this three minutes, if you get, we want to see if you get a reproduction of your symptoms. So any of the tingling or numbness in your right arm um, throughout the three minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, so go ahead and get in the position. Okay. Good. 90 degrees. Pull your shoulder blades back. Good. Okay. And start opening and closing your hands slowly. I'll be monitoring the time. We're going to try to go for three minutes. Let me know, again, if you get a reproduction of any of your symptoms. Starting to feel some numbness in my right hand. In your right hand. In the hand? Yes. Do you feel any numbness before in the forearm or up here? Just in my hand right now. Okay. We're going to go a little longer. Let me know if it gets worse or stays the same. Getting more numb, and I feel it more in my arm as well. Exciting. Okay, you can let your arms down. Okay. Okay. So I would consider that a positive result for the roost test because you were getting the increasing numbness and tingling in your right arm. So that leads me to believe that you may have the thoracic outlet syndrome. Okay. okay. Do you have any questions?